Hi everyone, today I'm excited to show you how to design a branch line coupler using CST Studio Suite, a powerful electromagnetic simulation software. Before we dive into the design process, let's take a moment to understand what a branch line coupler is and why it's an important component in RF and microwave engineering. A branch line coupler is a type of directional coupler used in RF and microwave circuits. It is a four-port device that splits an input signal into two equal output signals, each with a specific phase relationship. This type of coupler is particularly useful in applications like signal splitting, combining mixers, and balanced amplifiers. The branch line coupler consists of two parallel transmission lines, with two branches connecting them at specific points. In this structure, for example, if we feed a signal into port 1, it will split and travel through the branches to ports 2 and 3. At these ports, the signals are typically 90 degrees out of phase with each other, making the branch line coupler a 90 degree hybrid coupler. Port 4 is isolated and ideally receives no power. Now, let's talk about some key design parameters that are crucial for designing an effective branch line coupler. 1. Operating frequency, the center frequency at which the coupler operates efficiently. This determines the physical dimensions of the coupler, especially the lengths of the transmission lines. 2. Impedance matching, ensuring that the transmission lines have the correct characteristic impedance, typically 50 ohms, to minimize reflections and maximize power transfer. 3. Coupling coefficient. This defines how much of the input signal is coupled to the output ports. For a minus 3 decibels coupler, the input signal is evenly split between the output ports. 4. Substrate material. We have selected Rogers Row 4003C with a dielectric constant of 3.55. Its thickness is 0.508 millimeters. 5. Physical dimensions. The length of each branch line is typically a quarter wavelength at the center frequency. For a to point for gigahertz center frequency, the quarter wavelength in the selected substrate is approximately 19 millimeters. So, the length of each branch line will be 19 millimeters. 6. Isolation. The isolation between the input port and the isolated port, ideally very high, to prevent signal leakage. A summary of design parameters for the branch line coupler is provided here. Understanding these parameters is crucial for designing an effective branch line coupler. With this knowledge in mind, let's move on to the practical part of our tutorial, where we'll use CST Studio Suite to design and simulate our own branch line coupler. Stay tuned. Begin by opening CST Studio Suite and creating a new project. Select Microwave and RF Optical from the template options. Select Circuits and Components. Choose Planar Couplers and Dividers. Now, choose Frequency Domain Solver for this analysis. Click on Next. In this section, set the frequency range from 1.5 GHz to 3.5 GHz to cover our frequency of interest. After that, press Next. Press Finish to create the project. In the first step, we'll add the structural parameters into parameter list section.
Now, we would like to define a dielectric substrate. Go to Modeling and select Brick, then press ESC to show the dialog box, and create a dielectric substrate with the parameters defined. We'll use Rogers Row 4003 c with a dielectric constant of 3.55. In the Load from Material Library search to find Row 4003 c lossy. Now, in the same process, define a ground plane for the created substrate. With the dielectric and ground plane parameters set, we'll move on to designing the layout of the branch line coupler. Through modeling and brick, draw a transmission line that will form the isolated port. The length of this transmission line is equal with parameter L0. And the width of this transmission line is equal with parameter W0. Now, through modeling and brick, create an another transmission line that will form the input port. This line is parallel with isolated port. The time has come to design a branch line connecting parallel transmission lines. Go to Modeling and select Brick. Then define the branch line with a width of W and a length of a quarter wavelength or parameter L1.
In the next step, a transmission line with characteristic impedance of Z1 has to be designed. Go to Modeling and select Brick. Then, define the line. As branch line couplers have symmetrical structures, we can design the rest of the layout using transform tools in CST. You can do this by selecting line for and selecting transform tools. The mirror option must be selected and a blank square must be clicked to the left of the copy button to make a copy of line for. The selected line will be reflected on the Y-plane by entering 1 in the space blank in front of it. Lines 1, 2, and 3 need to be mirrored as well. Select lines 1, 2, and 3 and select the Transform tool. It is important to note that these lines should be reflected on the X-plane. This means that we should enter 1 in the blank space in front of X. As part of this step, we select all branch lines and click on the Boolean button. Afterwards, these lines can be united by choosing Add. It appears that the layout is almost complete. It is just a matter of smoothing the corners between parallel transmission lines and lines with high impedances. The corners can be seen if you zoom in, select two edges beside the corner by pressing the S key on your keyboard. Now, select Loft, then press OK. Similarly, do the same for the other corners. As soon as the layout has been completed, 
we can begin setting up the simulation. In this step, waveguide ports should be defined at the ends of transmission lines. By pressing the S key on your keyboard, you can select the surface of a transmission line. Next, click Simulation in the top menu. From there, select Waveguide Port. We need to specify some margins in the Waveguide Port setting. We apply a margin of 5 H's to the right, left, and top sides of the Waveguide Ports. Moreover, it is important that the waveguide port covers the edge of the dielectric. To cover the bottom edge of the dielectric, we consider a margin of HS. Now, we do the same process to define other waveguide ports. As of now, everything appears to have been completed. Changing some settings is all that needs to be done. Go to the background section and open it. There is nothing to worry about. Open the binaries. Nothing to be concerned about. To set up the solver, go to simulation and click Setup Solver. Run the simulation by clicking Start.
Once the simulation is complete, go to Navigation Tree then open 1D Results folder to view the S Parameters folder. We're looking for S to 1 and S31 to be around minus 3 decibels, indicating equal power splitting, and S11 and S41 to be as low as possible, indicating good impedance matching. As you can see, our simulation results show a good minus 3 decibel split with minimal reflection, which means our branch line coupler design is successful. Additionally, we can view the phase difference between output ports by clicking on the phase button. There seems to be a 90 degree phase difference between the output signals at center frequency. That's it for today's tutorial on designing a branch line coupler using CST Studio Suite. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to stay updated with more tutorials and tips. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.